When I woke up and saw the charred remains of the hill, I feared the worst. I grabbed the dogs and hiked up the back side and my suspicions were confirmed. It was gone. Back to nature, back to the earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I first remember seeing this tree in 2010. We had just moved into the neighborhood and I started walking the hills with Bella. I've spent lots of time around these hills and taken a lot of photos in the surrounding trees, but I feel most sentimental about this one. I don't know exactly why, but I think it's because of its ties to Bella, the sweet girl we rescued from the streets of Mexico and smuggled across the border. I was new to photography and was experimenting a lot with off-camera flash for a project on Flickr and decided to hang a flash up high. In fact, you can still see it in this photo. The tree was vibrant and strong, with a canopy larger than most of the scrub oaks in this area, and was the singular tree on this side of the hill, defying nature's algorithm about life on this side. She was with me from the time she was two months old until she passed away at age 14. She had a beautiful life and we took a lot of photos. She was my most willing muse as I began the process of learning how to use a camera. There are many other photos that I've taken of her that I prefer, but this one by the tree when she was 12 years old is etched in my mind as the link between her and these hills. I can remember the devastation I felt when I walked over the hill after a huge rainstorm and saw it laying on its side. The saturated soil on the sloped hill unable to sustain the weight of the tree any longer. I had planned on scattering Bella's ashes near the base and now I couldn't bring myself to do it. I had hoped to have a living symbol of the bond we shared, but nature had claimed it, the same as it had Bella. When we rescued Olive, I couldn't wait to get her into the hills. She was present when I scattered some of Bella's ashes into the ocean, and I loved the thought of carrying on Bella's legacy with Olive. Olive has never known life without these hills, and she became my next muse, taking countless photos with me amongst the trees, and this one in particular. Although it was no longer living, it was still relatively intact and strong. Most days she would walk over, through, or under the fallen tree and it always made me smile knowing she was experiencing Bella's tree, but in a different way, at a different phase of her life. When we got Buddy, we experienced an entirely different animal, figuratively and literally. He was a trained hunter with bulging muscles and an insatiable desire to track. It wasn't possible for him to run without howling, an urge buried deep in his DNA. He tolerated being in the house, but lived for being in the hills. I was shocked the first time I let him off leash and he climbed a tree, desperately seeking prey among the branches. I didn't know dogs did that. Surprisingly, he allowed me to take posed photos, although he would cry anxiously the whole time, scanning the air for a scent. Yes, he was a photo model, but he was a model of what a hound looks like and sounds like, a magnificent creature who became a part of the family tree. Our newest family member, Pino, has played around the tree, though I've never taken a formal shot of him standing on it. I've enjoyed watching him and Olive dance around it as they track a scent or become bit actors in my staged videos. The 
family tree lives on through him, from Bella to Olive to Buddy to whatever branch comes next on the family tree. When my nephew asked me to take engagement photos, the first place I thought of was the fallen tree, just as it was when we took photos with his son a few years later. Years down the road, when Andrew looks at these old photos, he'll see that tree, and for a brief moment it will exist again, along with the memories of those old hounds that used to dance around it. I'm eternally thankful I have all these photos and videos of family members, past and present, because soon enough, like this tree, we will all return to the ground, ashes and memories, hopefully remembered by those very close to us, the ones that matter the most. Our deepest roots and branches of the family tree. If we're lucky, they'll have a favorite spot to gather, something like this old tree, to tell old stories, and maybe in those stories, they'll remember those who found comfort in an old tree a tree that used to be.